let's quickly make the diagnosis of vesiculobullous disorders. So first you need to see the level of the split. If it is in epidermis, then it can be pemphigus fallacious or pemphigus vulgaris. If it is subepidermal, it can be bullous pemphigoid, dermatitis herpetiformis or linear IgA disease. Type of bulla in epidermal is flaccid and in subepidermal it is tense. Clinical features which can be further divided into oral or mucosal and into cutaneous features. Oral involvement is present in 90 to 100% cases of pemphigus vulgaris, 30% cases of bullous pemphigoid, absent in dermatitis herpetiformis and pemphigus fallacious and in linear IgA disease there can be oral involvement. Cutaneous features, pemphigus fallacious, flaccid bulla hardly seen, pemphigus vulgaris, flaccid bulla with crusted erosions and no tendency to heal. Bullous pemphigoid, dermatitis herpetiformis and linear IgA. All subepidermal they present with pruritis. In bullous pemphigoid they have urticaria along with tense bulla. Then distribution of pemphigus fallacious is in seboric areas and may also end up in erythroderma. Pemphigus vulgaris and bullous pemphigoid can be present over trunk, upper and lower limbs mostly in the flexures. Whereas dermatitis herpetiformis is mostly seen in extensors. And linear IgA disease, again, over extensors and over facial buttocks. Then, so this is a patient of pemphigus vulgaris with flaccid bulla crusted erosions. And a patient of bullous pemphigoid with urticaria and tense bulla. Histopathology of pemphigus vulgaris is very characteristic. As you can see, there is intraepidermal acantholytic blister lined by a single layer of basal cells and this is known as row of tombstone appearance. Then characteristic DIF findings. So intraepidermal IgG deposition in pemphigus vulgaris leading to fishnet pattern. This is bullous pemphigoid IgG and linear IgA disease IgA deposition. And in this papillary tip deposition of IgA in patients of dermatitis herpetiformis.